It's a box. It's another unboxing. Guess what it is? This might be a clue. It's more paint brushes. So, based on a recommendation from someone in the comments, and I've also heard good things about them as well from uh, various other places, I got some paint brushes from Rosemary and Co. I did this because they're cheap. They're really cheap. They're Kalinsky and Sable brushes that I think this everything, including shipping. I got three brushes here, and it came to £16. That's a tenner less than I paid for Broken Toad without the shipping. Um, granted, I got four brushes there, but I got one brush that I'm probably never going to use. So, these absolutely seemed worth a try. So, this is the box they came in. I've already had a sneak peek. Also, I just don't like cutting things open on camera because it takes ages, and who cares? So let's get in. It's a box. It's um, a cardboard box, and it's full of a bunch of crap I don't care about. In the bin. And a piece of card. We'll use that for terrain. Some bubble wrap, which is taped down on top of some paint brushes, which are also taped down. So... These things aren't going to move, are they? Let's get this off. And um, nothing else, nothing else. We no longer need this. Um, whatever. Okay, so I got three brushes. I got a zero, a one, and a two. Because those are the brushes I use most of the time in most different brands. And I wanted to see what they were like. They have a handy size chart, actually, on their website, which tells you the exact diameter and length of each brush so you can see what you're getting. So I got the ones closest to what I was thought were the Winsor Newton Series 7s that they usually use. So, uh, I need scissors to open this or a knife or something. Hobby knife to the rescue. We're in. So no brush tips this time, just paint brushes. So this is a size one and it's the same caps so this is the series 33s by the way over here series 33s which are their uh, round watercolor Kalinsky sable pointed brushes that are quite cheap they're like four pounds five pounds a brush it's very cheap for Kalinsky sable so we'll see how they do this is a size zero and this is, uh, must be, by process of elimination, our size 2. So, let's have a look at them without their caps on. And we'll do a quick compare as well. I'll compare them to the Broken Toads and the Winter Newtons. Just let me get my big pack of brushes out. Uh, they should all be same length. So here are, here we are. We have... All the three brush brands here. See my slightly older Series 7 there. So, do The Rosemary and Co's have the exact same length handle as the Winter Newtons to the Feral. And are slightly, which is different to the Broken Toads. And already I can see a fair bit of similarity between all of them. They're all roughly the same size. The Rosemary and Co is actually a little bit longer than the Broken Toads. If we look at that. And again, it's hardly fair to compare it to the Series 7 that I've reused for a year. But the Series 7 still looks like it's got a bit of a bigger belly than both of them. I'm going to compare it mostly to the Broken Toad. As I didn't give them size to a great review. It's not a bad brush. It's just that... Uh, there are better brushes. So, let's get the end. Yeah, oh, much longer. This is a much longer brush than the size 2 Broken Toad. It's making the, it's making the Broken Toad look fat in comparison. Um, but again, the proof is in the painting. So, we'll see how that works. It's conditioned to a point. Both of them still holding the point very well after the Broken Toad touch. I conditioned this with Master Soap so it's holding its point nicely. So yeah, 
Where's Minko? A little bit longer. The longest of all size 2s so far. Maybe the size 1 will compare. Okay, so. There's, these are the size 1s of each brand. Again, handles, not much difference there. To the from the tip of the ferrule to the tip of the brush, from the end of the ferrule to the tip of the brush, we are, we can see again, the size one Rosemary Co, a little bit longer than Broken Toad. Um, fair bit longer than the Windsor Newton. Little bit uh, larger diameter on the Rosemary Co than the Broken Toad, I think. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. Yeah, the Rosemary Co looks a little bit larger, bigger belly. So here we have the size zeros. Now this is immediately quite interesting. Got the ends lined up here. The Rosemary Co brush handle is the same length as all the other brushes in the range, whereas the Broken Toad and the Windsor Newton have both gone for slightly shorter brushes on the si brush handles on the size zeros. The Rosemary Co size zero is actually by far the largest of the three. Significantly bigger than the Broken Toad one. I would say bigger even than the Series 7. Longer too. So this will be interesting. I've been really enjoying painting with the Broken Toad size zero. It's very good for edge highlighting and painting scratches. But I would guess that the size zero Broken Toad is actually roughly equivalent to a double zero, maybe even a triple zero in the Rosemary and Co series 33s. I think it might actually be equivalent to a size double zero in the Windsor Newton series 7 range, but I don't have one to compare it to. So there's quite a big jump from that. So let's actually pull that out and replace it with a size 1 and see. Aha! Okay, so here, so this is a this is a fairer comparison, where we have the Rosemary and Co size one, size sorry size zero at the top, a Broken Toad size one, and then went so the Broken Toad size one is actually much closer in size to the size zeros of both the Winter Newton series seven and the Rosemary and Co size zeros. So they're equivalent. So if you're looking at this, no wonder then the Broken Toad size zero felt like it was the finest brush I've ever painted with, because technically it is. So you could probably achieve the same things as you can with Broken Toad size zero as you can with a double zero or triple zero in either of these two ranges. So that is interesting. That they're almost identical in terms of length there and width. So that's uh, that was worth that's an interesting turn up. So here's the broken toad size two and the rosemary co size one. You can see the same is not true here. The rosemary and co size one is actually significantly smaller both in length and diameter than the broken toad size two. So the this it's not a linear scale so you have to be aware of that when you're buying uh, any of these brushes. The Rosemary and Co's are much closer in size to the Winter Newton Series 7s, and they're much cheaper too, but they're not quite as large on the belly. So we'll see how they perform when we do some painting. And I'm sure I've got a space marine around here to test this all out on. I've got dozens of the things lying around. So uh, I will return once I've given them a little bit of a trial run. Okay, so these two brushes have just done the same thing. I have just uh, done a quick glaze on a model using some blood letter uh, glaze from GW and it's this, like this it's the same five strokes and I just sort of decided to alternate the brushes in order to see the difference and you can see here the broken toad these are untouched from after I lifted them off the model the broken toad brush the bottom one here this is the size twos it is not snapping back into a straight line. The Rosemary & Co, 
however, has snapped back into a straight line. This is what I mean when I say the broken toad brushes just they feel too thin and too weak in the bristles compared to uh, other brushes. So the Rosemary Co. doing really well here, really good snap, broken toad, not so great. On to the next set of tests. All right, conclusion time. Here are the brushes. So, I use the two a lot. I use the zero a lot. I used the one to try it out, but then I didn't really bother using it that much. I mostly just used the size two and the size zero. Um, the one is fine. It had a bit. It had a stray hair. Uh, right on the tip, I think it's gone now. Um, yeah, it had a stray hair, which was making it a bit difficult to use. But once I plucked that, it was actually it was good. It was it was a nice little brush. But um, whoops, size wise, it you know it being right between a two and a zero, I didn't really need this brush that much but you know no doubt when my zero gives up i'll go back to using this you could use it in a pinch but quite frankly um any situation where you might want to use this you're probably better off using either the two or the zero it's neither one nor nor t'other with that said these are excellent the, these are absolutely excellent brushes they're very, very good for glazing. They hold a lot of paint when glazing. Yeah, their belly is nice and large. They hold their point very, very well. Barely any curling at all. Um, they've got a lot of snap to them. They they go straight back to being straight very easily. I've only got a slight bend on it now, but I haven't I haven't uh, cleaned these yet. These have been I painted with these for about a day so far and. I haven't cleaned them with brush soap or anything yet, and they're holding their point really, really, really well. Um, the only problem I have with them, and it's not really a problem with these brushes, these are great brushes, excellent brushes for the price, definitely can't go wrong. Um, if you're on a budget, get these. Um, they are absolutely excellent brushes. You probably only need two of them, the size two and the size zero. The only problem I had with them was that for doing the edge highlights and the straight lines, they weren't as good as the broken toad brushes. So this is, I kind of stand by my conclusion in my broken toad video now, that the broken toad brushes aren't very good at most tasks compared to any other brush of um, similar price. But the broken toad brushes are absolutely amazing for edge highlighting and doing straight lines and also small dots. So I've got some examples. Here is my Death Watch Marine that I painted with the Rosemary Co. brushes. Um, the black base coat was done with an airbrush and then everything else was done with the Rosemary, Rosemary and Co. brushes. So touch-ups were done with uh, the number two mostly. This needed a lot more touch-up than the Broken Toad one, who is here. And even after the touch-up, I feel like I managed to get finer lines with less mistakes on this one. Especially when doing um, darts and scratches than I did on this one. Come on, focus. There we go. So, they're certainly not bad. I could certainly achieve it, but they are just, you know, not quite as good at the task as other brushes that I now own. But in terms of doing glazes and base coats and touching up and uh, layering and everything else that you would want to do on miniature painting, they are absolutely amazing brushes, especially for the value. Um, frankly, I don't think I need to buy Winsor & Newton Series 7s anymore. I might get one Winsor & Newton Series 7, but I don't really think I need to. These cost almost half as much, and depending where you look, a third as much. 
and they easily do the job. The only question I have about them is longevity, and I can't tell that in uh, a review this this uh, short. I will no doubt do a uh, review in the future where I kind of do and catch up on how my brushes are doing. So these are now my new go-to multi-purpose brushes. Um, I also will I'll show you some I did on Mr. Badrook here. So all the extra stuff that I painted on this guy I did with the rosemary and co. So I've base coated tiny bug. I've base coated some areas with the number two. Come out nice and smooth. I had a lot of control doing that. Um, and the brush didn't bend or warp or anything like the broken toads do. I was glazing this red casing here. You can see it's darker at the bottom than it is darker at the top than it is at the bottom. And they worked very, very well for the glazing. Again, a lot of control, holds a lot of paint. And uh, I even did these little highlights down here on his boots with the size zero. So they're still good, still perfectly serviceable brushes. And tiny little highlights on those metal ribbons, again, with the size zero. Um, so yeah, they're absolutely excellent brushes. I'm just showing this guy off now. Um, which did very well. I also might recognize this guy. He's come along. I repainted the trim on this shoulder pad from silver to green. Again, using the Rosemary and Co's, and I've got some quite fine lines there. There you go, focused. And again, glazes to get the highlights correct on the shoulder pad trim have come up absolutely amazing. But the Broken Toads are definitely better for black lining and edge highlighting. But these are excellent for everything else. So my suggestion would be um, you get two Rosemary and Co's and a Broken Toad at the moment, based off the brushes I've reviewed. Get a Broken Toad for doing edge highlighting and fine lines and everything else like that. And uh, Rosemary and Co for doing almost every other job. I can't find something that they're not good at. So uh, there we go. That's my review of these Rosemary and Co Series 33s. Boop, 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 boop. Um, the size 2 and the size 0 are all I really used for painting. The size 1 seems redundant. But it's nice to have the backup. And uh, yeah, go go get yourself some of these. I'll put a link in the description as to where you can buy them. You can buy them directly from the manufacturer, which is the cheapest place to get them, I found. Um, yeah, that's it. I've got more unboxings and reviews of other, some other products I've recently acquired coming up uh, this time-ish next week. So stay tuned. Bye.